What's good, y'all? Marion Gates, also known as Phenomenon. If you're new to this channel, subscribe, hit that notification bell, comment, like, and if you really enjoy my content, share it. We're thinking of you, buddy. But uh, right now, we got a show to do, guys. So we ready to work? Let's do it. King James says the debate of him versus MJ is great for barber shops, but it's also perfect for first take two, and it's getting more real by the moment. Here's LeBron on his legacy. It'll be great for my legacy once I'm done playing the game. And we look back on the game and we say, oh, you know, this guy went to three straight finals, four straight finals, five, six, whatever, seven. I think it's great to be talked about, see what I was able to accomplish as, a, as an individual. Um, you know, you talk about you know longevity and, and being able to uh, you know just play at a high level for for a long period of time, and, and I've been fortunate enough to, to be able to do that and, and be a part of two franchises that uh, able to take two franchises to four finals apiece. You know, so um, and no one's ever done that either. No, no, this this whole thing, all of this. It's all about me. Wow. Let me tell you something. Congratulations to the United States team for bringing home gold. You see, We had to replace Michael Jeffrey Jordan. The NBA was desperate. Jordan, when he left, first time the ratings dropped. Comes back, ratings go back up. Jordan was one of those guys that they knew there was going to be a void in the game when he left. So what did they do? They went out and they saw this kid out there at Akron. They saw him six foot eight, 200 plus pounds, dude built like a man. He was just a kid, but he was built like a grown man. Up there with all his strength and athleticism, they said he was like Michael Jordan and Magic Johnson were put in the lab. And they took their talents and they put them together and they created LeBron James, they said he was a chosen one. They said he always makes the right play. He makes his teammates better. Oh my goodness, he's bigger. He's stronger. He's faster. Oh my goodness gracious. Oh my God. This man came through. They needed a savior after Michael Jordan left the NBA. The fanboys of LeBron James will tell you, Michael Jordan quit. He quit in 1993 when they needed him the most. Maybe they missed him. Maybe they missed the fact that he was gone. They wanted to see him come through and win more championships. But he left to go play baseball. Then he came back with a new number. Had the 45 on. And a player from the Orlando Magic told him, I believe it was Nick Anderson. He said, Michael Jordan. You're not playing like 23. So Michael Jordan switched back his number. They end up getting bounced in the second round in six games. Then Michael Jordan came back again. That year, the next year, they win 72 games. He three-peats again. Then he leaves again. The fan boys was upset. They said, oh my goodness, he quit on us again. We wanted to see some more Michael Jordan. What we gonna do? We come back to the Wizards. They say, oh my goodness, this is not the same guy we remember. Why you even come back in the first place? We need a savior. So then LeBron James, they get it. Michael Jordan leaves and retires for good. He comes back. He gets drafted in 2003. Then he gets drafted by his hometown. Coincidence? I think not. 
They say this is the Savior. This is the chosen one. Go ahead and tat it on your back. Let the world know. Make sure you frown yourself. Because you are the king. King James. King James, we going to make sure that you are the face of the league. We going to make sure you protect. We going to make sure if you don't get the championships in the same amount of time as Michael Jordan. You think it's a coincidence that after year set, when he ain't won a championship, that a left Cleveland to go to Miami. No, 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 no. He had to save his legs. He needed to get championships. You can't replace Michael Jordan if you don't win. So he goes to Miami. Oh my goodness. It was a miracle according to LeBron James that they were even able to make it to that championship round because he didn't have the complimentary players. But uh, somehow, some way, this man makes it. Oh my goodness. He makes it to the finals. Oh my goodness, they up 2-1. Everybody is ready to celebrate. He got his list out. He's ready. Oh my goodness, look, I'm passing a church right now. It's called Generation Church. Generation Church in the background. Oh my goodness gracious. I need to go and give them a sermon. There the church is right now. Now, let's continue the story. So LeBron James, after he is up 2-1, he make a fun of Dirk Nowinski. He up there coughing. <laughs> oh my goodness, he knows. I'm about to tell everybody. I'm about to rub it in their face. I'm about to tell them the chosen one has arrived. I've come as your savior. Then they lose. But don't lose hope. The next year, he gets his complimentary players. All the complimentary players, they make it to the finals again. He wins in five games. And he says, about that time. Oh, this story ain't done yet. He goes the next year. They go to San Antonio. Oh, my goodness gracious. The fan boys is happy. Oh my goodness, they back in the finals. Oh my goodness. LeBron James scoring points. It's game six. He's balling out. Then he turns over the ball. Misses a shot. Everybody thinks all oh, hope is lost. But no, no, no. No complimentary players. They step up. Now oh, one of his superstar teammates huh? gets the rebound. Kicks that out to Ray Allen. One of the greatest shooters of all time. Had that step. He hits that three. Woo! Takes the air out the building. They come back in game seven. LeBron James closes the deal. Two championships he has. Then the next year, he gets beat. But it's all good. Don't lose hope, man, boys. This sermon ain't over. The next year, he comes back. He says, I'm going home. He goes to Cleveland. Oh, Cleveland, Ohio, where it all started, where his story began, where he was drafted, where the Savior had been brought. Oh, yeah. This man, he gets his team together. He recruits Kevin Love, trades away Andrew Wiggins. Now he got Kyrie Irving. He brings over James Jones. James Jones brings over James Jones. James Jones. Yes, now he ready to ball out. Everybody is predicting that the Cleveland Cavaliers is going to win the championship. LeBron James is going to solidify his legacy. He going to have three. He going to win championships in two different cities. Everybody is happy. Oh, my goodness. The fan boys is pom-pomming up. Shannon Sharp about to bust a nut. Nick Wright, he up here getting hard as ever. Oh my goodness gracious, everybody can't believe it. Then Kyrie and Kevin Love go down. Oh, he up 2-1 again, just like in Dallas. Everybody thinks, oh my goodness, LeBron James gonna single-handedly bring them a championship. Look at who his teammates are. Look at who he has. He got a gopher-looking dude out there balling. 
This dude is about to hoop. He putting up the numbers. Oh, but they lose. Once again, everybody's the narrative is, if this team was at 100%, there's no way Golden State would have won that championship. He goes back the next year. They meet up again in the finals. Everybody says this team is 73-9, but they still give Cleveland the advantage. There's plenty of those fanboys that were saying Cleveland was going to win this series. But things start to lick Graham again. He's down 3-1. Oh, Draymond Green with his dumb ass sits there and tries to hit LeBron James in his loins. Oh, my goodness. He gets suspended somehow, some way. Him, Kyrie, go out there and ball. They take it to a game six. They take it to a game seven. Oh, my goodness. The game is close. LeBron James gets the block. Everybody wants to talk about that block, but the game wasn't over. Then Kyrie puts that dagger, crosses over, uses his nice moves, hits the three. Oh my goodness, the shot goes in. The game is pretty much over. There's no way, there's no how this should be happening in the minds of the fanboys. Even though this is the same team that they told us if they were at 100%, the day would beat the Golden State Warriors. They make it happen. He says after this, that one right there may be the greatest player of all time. The greatest. He says he's better than Bill Russell with his 11 championships. He say he better than Kareem with his 10 finals appearances, six championships. He say he better than Magic Johnson with his five championships and nine appearances. He says he's better than Michael Jordan that went six and no in the finals, not ever going to a game seven. He says he's better than every player that's ever walked the planet Earth. That right there made him the greatest. They said after this, his fanboy said, after this, everything else he does, it's just icing on the cake. So he goes off and he loses two more times. But nobody is ever gonna count that against him because it never does. No matter what LeBron James does, no matter how many times he loses, no matter how many times he comes up short, they will always find a way to make this man the GOAT. You know why? Because he's the chosen one. The chosen one. It don't matter. When you're the chosen one, your destiny must be fulfilled. And think about in Star Wars. In Star Wars, what happened? Anakin Skywalker. He was seen as the chosen one, the savior. He goes through, he does what he does. We know the story that those that know the Star Wars story, the kid was a genius, the kid was a wonder kid, the kid had the gift, then he turns his back, goes to the dark side, sounds like LeBron James with Miami, goes to the dark side, but then in the end, his destiny must be fulfilled. He meets his son, Luke Skywalker, he says, I am your father. Luke, no! Can't believe it. He's thrown off. But what happens in the end, in the last movie of the Star Wars, during that Luke arc, what happens? Palpatine gets tossed over his head. He says, no! Throws Palpatine to his doom. He fulfills his destiny. That's the same thing with LeBron. So even if he didn't win championships, what they gonna say? You got 40,000 points. 40,000 points. That's what they gonna talk about. And if it ain't that, now they gonna bring up this MVP of the Olympics as if he's the only one that's ever done it. It didn't help Manu Ginobili. It didn't help Kevin Durant. But trust me, when it comes to LeBron James, it don't matter what this man does. It's going to always enhance his legacy. 
It's going to always enhance his GOAT conversation. This man could get gentlemen swept in the first round, but he is the chosen one, the most manufactured superstar. His destiny has been decided by the NBA, by any means necessary. This man will fulfill his destiny. We will move all the pieces. We will move the goalposts. We will do whatever it takes to make sure that our king, our savior, our chosen one fulfills his destiny, which is to replace Michael Jordan. It ain't a coincidence that he does the powder toss. It ain't a coincidence that he got the number 23. It ain't a coincidence that he did the Space Jam 2 movie. It ain't a coincidence that he's smoking cigars. It ain't a coincidence that this man said, I'm going to help the black community because the black community was the one thing, the one smudge, the one smear that they could say about Michael Jordan. He didn't do nothing for the black community. It's what they try to tell you. What they don't tell you is they donated a million dollars to the Malcolm X movie. What they don't tell you is this man has employed more black CEOs than any other Fortune 500 company. What they won't tell you is he donated to that politician's campaign. They won't tell you that. No, no, no. That goes off. The, 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 the one thing that they can say LeBron James has done over Michael Jordan. The off-court things. Because he can't outsell him in sneakers. He can't out mid-range jump on him. He can't, he don't have better footwork. He don't have a better post game. He don't have a better any of those things. He's not a better ball handler. They about the same when it comes to passing. I would say Michael Jordan was a more efficient passer. But we ain't gonna talk about that because this is about the chosen one. No matter what he does, no matter how he moves, when you are chosen, when you are chosen in the Bible, when you are chosen in the movie, when you are chosen to fulfill a certain role, they gonna make sure it happens by any means necessary. So that's why when I see all these things that they bring up about LeBron James, I'm like, so what? It don't matter what he do. This man can sneeze. And y'all will say he sneezed better than Michael Jordan. And y'all will say that adds to his GOAT conversation. That adds to his legacy. It don't matter what this man does because he's the chosen one. That's the truth. LeBron James is the chosen one. He's the chosen one. Kevin Durant has four gold medals. Four. Four. And an Olympic MVP. That don't help his legacy. But with LeBron James, it's always going to help. Let me say this last part. Joe Montana was seen as the GOAT. The GOAT QB. They didn't move the goalposts for Tom Brady. Told Tom Brady is not the chosen. They didn't move the goalposts for him. Now, they tried it with Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers had one Super Bowl, and they was already trying to put him in that GOAT conversation. Is he better than Tom Brady and all these other things? They were constantly talking about him, building them up, propping them up. But Tom Brady, not only did he match Joe Montana in championships, he exceeded it, nearly doubled it. He has seven Super Bowls, 10 Super Bowl appearances. He doesn't have a losing record in the Super Bowl. And even the games he lost were close. So we're talking, this is why we're talking about two different guys. Like, this is, this is how you surpass, surplant Michael Jordan. If LeBron James was 7-10 in the finals, you fanboys would have a great case. Because he would not have not only matched Michael Jordan, but he surpassed him. He never did that. He never surpassed Michael Jordan, despite all the opportunities. People would not be calling Tom Brady the GOAT quarterback. It would still be Joe Montana if he was 4-10. If he was four and ten, if he was four and six in the Super Bowls, Joe Montana would still be considered the great because they'd be like Joe Montana was perfect. Not not only that, he never threw an interception. But Tom Brady has nearly doubled the amount of Super Bowls that Joe Montana has. 
when he was down, he had one game. He didn't have a series that he can come back. He, if he lost that Super Bowl against Atlanta, there's no coming back. There's no returning to try again. Or the better team won that day. No, you get one opportunity. So that comeback was far greater because everything, all the marbles were on the line in that game. And he figured it a way out. That's why Tom Brady's Super Bowl comeback to me is more impressive than that 3-1. You get multiple games. You have to, you have to win four games. It's the first team to win four. That's not the first 3-1 comeback. It's the first 3-1 comeback in the finals. But teams will come back. Just just the just the previous series. The Thunder were up 3-1. And Golden State had came back. So this wasn't no unbeatable team. It would have been different if this team ran rough shot. And the Cleveland Cavaliers were truly the underdog. And they struggled to get to the finals. And they won. That would have been very impressive. But they were the number one seed as well. And it was the team they were supposed to beat the year before. Regular season records don't mean anything. We've seen the Dallas Mavericks lose to the Golden State Warriors. We've seen underdogs beat teams with multiple top 75 players. But fanboys don't want to, they, they want to ignore that. They want to ignore the fact that the Detroit Pistons beat four top 75 players. You can say they're out there prime, whatever. You don't, you don't use that logic when it comes to MJ. You don't lose that logic. He was the, he's the oldest team to win a championship. He was on the oldest team to win a championship. An old Dallas Mavericks team beat LeBron James. So age ain't nothing but a number. Dennis Rodman was not no spring chicken when he was playing with the Bulls. This is the same guy. He was on the same team that you said that they, did, they didn't beat them until they were old. Yet all of a sudden, Dennis Rodman just gets the fountain of youth in y'all brains. And he's this great player Grant, again. He was on that Detroit Pistons team that y'all said was old. He was on that same Detroit Pistons team that y'all said was too old. Now all of a sudden he get with Michael Jordan. It wouldn't matter. He had John Sally too. It didn't matter if he took all those old guys and won championships. Y'all would have built them up with well, this Detroit Pistons team. That was championship caliber guys. Ain't that the same team y'all said to me? But that's that's y'all fanboy logic. Tom Brady is revered. The reason why he gets so much respect and why he's considered the GOAT is because he surpassed Joe Montana. They didn't just move the goalposts. It'd be like, well, it's okay, Tom Brady. We'll just excuse away your losses against Eli Manning. We'll just excuse away your, your losses. No, he had, when he lost to Eli twice, even though those were close games, they did not put him in the goal. They didn't excuse them away. Like, well, you know, lucky, lucky catch. Tom Brady sealed the deal, but we're going to put him as a goal. No, he didn't become the goal until he earned it. He took it. LeBron James hasn't done it, but that's y'all savior. I already know what time it is. When it comes to y'all, it doesn't matter what LeBron James does. No matter how many times he lose, he can lose again. He, he can miss the playoffs next year, and y'all still going to call him the GOAT because you will find a way. The media will find a way to push this man over, Michael Jordan. Instead of letting him organically get it, they're going to make sure, by any means necessary, the power is suggested, before the Olympics even started, they were pushing this man. That's how you know it's an agenda. Before the Olympics even started, they were saying he's the best player. Y'all think that's a coincidence? These aren't coincidences. These are purposeful. That's all I'm trying to let y'all know. This is all purposeful. He was designed and created to replace Michael Jordan. That's what he, that's his whole purpose. That's why he's the chosen one. He has been purposely put in place to supplant Michael Jordan. And then there's gonna be somebody they're gonna try to use. To, to supplant, even if he did, they will find somebody to supplant him. But if you keep lowering the bar, the next guy that comes on, he might only have to win two championships. Because they will find a way. Michael Jordan won six championships in the modern era. You're not, they we're never going to see another guy win 11. We could, it is possible. The fact that, my, that that LeBron James made it to 10 finals lets you know it's still possible to three-peat twice. It's still possible to win six championships. It's not out of the realm of possibilities. It is out of the realm of possibilities with free agent movement and player movement to win 11 championships. We're not going to see that again. But what Michael Jordan did was hard to do, but not impossible. 
it was hard. We got guys. Tim Duncan has five. Kobe Bryant has five. We have guys that win. It's possible. But you have to earn that. You have to you have to go out there and do it. He had all the opportunities. The NBA presented him with every opportunity to surpass Michael Jordan. This man was given superstar. Given free reign. They didn't block any of his trades or any of that. No matter what, how much collusion this man has had, they've always allowed it. Turned a blind eye to whatever he does. They've given this man referee call after referee call, allow him to charge, change the rules, everything. Things y'all say they did for Michael Jordan, we actually have concrete proof that this man can break the rules and still make it. That's the difference. Yeah, these things, y'all, yeah, the, the rules that they changed for Michael Jordan, they changed for everybody. It was to protect all players, all their superstars. Larry Bird was complaining about the Detroit Pistons. Carl Malone was complaining about the Detroit Pistons. Magic, all these guys were complaining about the Detroit Pistons' dirty play. They were trying to injure guys. It's a difference between rough play and injuring somebody. And it, they didn't take the change the rules where you couldn't touch nobody. Because Michael Jordan still was getting touched up. By the Pacers, by the Knicks. So they didn't change the rule. They just changed it from now we're going to add penalties if you're sitting there clotheslining guys. You're not about to end our superstar players, our breadwinners. All of them, not just Michael Jordan. You're not about to end these guys' careers. These guys are benefiting from the same rules. Stop acting as if they change the rules of Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan leave, they go back to the old way. No, they didn't. These guys are playing at even softer eras. What are you talking about? Stop acting like these guys are playing in a different... They changed the rules only for Michael Jordan. And nobody else benefited from it. They have more free freedom of movement than they've ever had in the history of the game. They literally let him take extra steps. They let him charge and lower his shoulder. And they've been allowing it since he first got in the league. Cry, he could touch the rest. It's so many things that is exclusive to LeBron James. Because he's the chosen one. So anyway, tell me your thoughts in the comment section. Like, subscribe, and if you really enjoy my content, share it.